do you know how to spot and stop a fraudulent transfer? In my experience, very few do. Hello, I'm Ryan Burns, the cyber guy at the TML Risk Pool. Welcome back to another edition of Cyber Bites, a short lunchtime video series where I share with you some best practices for navigating our ever-changing digital world and avoiding cyber crimes and pitfalls. Now, we've talked in the past about how cyber criminals are targeting organizations just like yours, hoping to trick you into sending money directly into their bank accounts. We continue to see these types of events regularly, and they are not small amounts. Our members have had losses in the tens of thousands of dollars to well over one million. And the simple truth is this, these are avoidable. So today, we'll go into detail about how these types of attacks are happening, what to look out for, and what steps you can take to avoid them completely. This will keep your organization from suffering a significant loss. And to put it bluntly, it could save your job. So what is the best way to learn about these types of attacks? You guessed it. Let's welcome back Hacker Hank. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Hank, I never expected such an evil hacker to become such a good friend of the show. The pleasure's all yours, Ryan. I'm just here to punish my rival hackers that are making too much money off your members using outdated methods. It's been working since the new kids hit the block and they've just got to stop both the methods. And seriously, boy bands. <laughs> Not a new kids fan. Ryan, if you could see the scowl under this mask, man. Well, we do appreciate you joining the show. So tell us, how does a criminal like you pull off a fraudulent transfer? Sure, Ryan. I'm gonna open up my old playbook, step by step. Ooh, baby. Step one, recon. I have to identify a target. I start by looking at your organizational roster, your website, social media, even city council meeting minutes. In no time, I can construct a full org chart with public information. You'd be shocked at how much information you guys are willing to disclose. After I decide, target acquired. Maybe it's Margie from accounting or Bob from account services. But they look so nice. Exactly, Ryan. I'm looking for the nice ones. They're more likely to fall because they're trying to do the right thing quickly. Step two, let's start phishing. I start sending phishing emails, hoping to get my target to click on a link or open up an attachment. I want access to their email. A simple click and boom, I'm in. Sometimes it doesn't even take that. I can just scan the dark web and find their email credentials just waiting for me. Step three, on the hook. Now that I have access to the account, I'll create an email rule or an RSS feed to notify me when they get emails containing the keywords that make me happy, like payment, invoice, you know, money words. <laughs> Step four, incoming. Once I see an invoice come in from a legitimate vendor, you know, because it's hitting my inbox too, that's when I really get to work. Step five, impersonate. I'll create a lookalike domain that is so similar to the real thing, you know, like ABC Construction Inc. versus ABC Construction. Once that is set up, I send you a new email using the new domain that looks just like it's from the person you've been talking to the entire time. Right down to the name, logo, address, you know, the whole nine yards, except now I inform you that we have new banking information, including account and routing information. So please send all future payments to this new account, AKA Hacker Hank. The target changes the account information and had jackpot. Now I just sit back and watch my bank account grow while I plan my trip to Kokomo. You'd be shocked how often this works. I've done it for years. That is truly evil, Hank but I don't know why I would expect anything less. I know. All my half-wit rivals, they're getting rich off this garbage. It has to stop. Last trip I took to the Bahamas, guess who was there? MS Doss Ross. That guy couldn't hack his way out of a wet paper bag even if I gave him a machete. It has to stop, Ryan. I agree. So let's talk about how you can prevent this from happening. First, three letters, MFA, multi-factor authentication. This is when the app or the website requires more than just a password. It might be a code texted to you or a fingerprint on your phone. Two, strong passwords, 12 characters or more, and do not reuse passwords from other sites. Three, strong financial controls. 
always verify any requested change to a payment process through a secondary method with a verified person. This includes a request to change a bank account or routing number, a change from sending a paper check to a wire transfer, or a change on a direct deposit for an employee. You can do this by simply picking up the phone and calling a number that you know belongs to the person requesting the change. Speak to them directly and ask. Do not simply call the number in the email. So use an existing number that you already have on file. We call this an out-of-band authentication. Four, train your employees, not only on your financial policies and procedures, but also on how to identify phishing attempts. The best way to do this is by starting a simulated phishing program where someone at your organization gets to pretend to be a hacker. I even have a mask for when I do it. Ryan, that's identity theft. Hey, I'm not a hacker, but I can play one on email. That's criminal. I'm proud of you. Five, check your rules. Look in your email program, like Outlook, and see if there are any rules set up or RSS feeds that you didn't create. If you see any, there's a good chance that someone has set them up to monitor your inbox. Contact your IT staff immediately. Well done, Ryan. Those tips will shut down at least 99% of these no-talent hackers trying to be real hackers just like me. So you don't use these methods? Of course not, Ryan. I graduated to more sophisticated crimes. If these guys are Ocean's Eleven, I'm Ocean's <laughs> 11,000. Well, then humor us and share your method. You really want me to spill my secrets? Not gonna happen. But I'll give you a few more amateur methods my cronies use. Method two, what's good for the city is good for the vendor. And by good, I mean very bad. Sometimes hackers like to mix it up and use the same method but with vendors instead. Because guess what? The vendor's probably doing business with a whole bunch of organizations just like yours. So I'll get in their email box just like I got into yours then I'll send out emails from their account asking you to change banking information. You won't even know what hit you because you know what? I didn't even have to hack you. And the email is coming straight from the vendor that you have already been emailing with. I would like to say that I'm surprised by all of this, Hank, but I know you too well. But what does surprise me is how many times this works. And we can stop this slightly different type of attack almost completely by using a method we just discussed a moment ago out-of-band authentication. Verify all requested changes to a payment process using a secondary method. Again, if you get an email, make a phone call to a verified person at a verified number. The vendor will quickly know if they sent the email or not. And this simple step can help you avoid a six or even seven figure mistake and never accept an inbound call as the verification method. It must always be initiated by you. Now, Hank, all of this seems like a lot of work. I thought you said you like to work smarter, not harder. That's not hard, Ryan. But you know what's even easier, Ryan? I won't hack anybody at all. I'll just find a vendor that's doing business with a bunch of different organizations, you know, like your members. I'll create a spoofed email with a lookalike domain, like I mentioned earlier. Then I'll just blast out emails with invoices, hoping to get somebody to buy. Here's an invoice for $6,000 for, uh, you know, something like services rendered. Please send prompt payment to my account. All I need is one or two. And again, out of band authentication would stop this too. Well, I've got to say, Hank, we learn something new every time you join us. Thanks, Ryan. I do my best to be the absolute worst. You are the worst. But we also learn about methods hackers are using to attack us, which helps us come up with ways to avoid becoming their next victim. Hacker Hank, everyone. So what did we learn today? Hackers like Hank and his buddies are not going to stop. As long as we keep giving them an easy target, they're going to keep coming at us. But this is one area where we have an advantage. We have control over when and where we send funds. We have the ability to verify the recipient of those funds. Just because we get a request to change that process, that does not mean we have to act on it immediately. Take your time to verify. Use an out-of-band authentication method. Have a second set of eyes and approve all electronic transfers. Take your time. Taking these extra steps can be the difference between sending a successful payment or losing hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. Your job. Does this process take a few extra minutes? Yes but so does going to your managers or to your council and explaining why your organization just lost a ton of money. 
So if you want more information on what your organization can do to help avoid this type of loss, or you have any cyber-related questions at all, please reach out to me. Let's keep Hacker Hank and his buddies out of our inboxes. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Cyberbox.